just so you guys know, uh, my name's Jay Wilson. I um, am helping steer the data crew uh, community site. It's a resource that I set up to just kind of make some of the learnings that I did in Domo a little less hard for you guys. So, you know, anytime I learn something new, I'm like, okay, I got to go get, make a video, put it on YouTube, or I need to write a quick article, get it up on data crew. Um, I'm trying to encourage folks from the community to participate. And, you know, as you have your learnings or as you guys are writing your articles, feel free to share them on data crew. So really we have one place we can go to that's searchable um, where we can, you know, quickly put up our content. Um, I just wanted to give a quick disclaimer, right? Um, we've got a couple people on the call that work at the companies that they work at. You know, this is just a community session. The the things you hear and say are like they're going to be reflective of our experience as our personal experiences. They do not necessarily represent the companies that we work for or at. Uh, Noah, just before we kick off this AMA, I guess I have a kind of a ice, it's not even an icebreaker, an introduction question for you, which is, you know, what was your biggest aha moment with DDX Bricks? And well, first off, who are you? What do you do? And then what was your biggest aha moment? Yeah, for sure. So Jay, thank you for inviting me to, to do this. I'm, I'm excited to field questions uh, from the community and um, just get to know you all better. Uh, in terms of, I guess, intro, intro on my end, um, I am the man, a manager of data app innovation at Domo. So tasked with helping grow the data app ecosystem, um, in particular, enabling people like you guys um, and all kinds of developers to build on top of Domo. Um, my background is in early stage startups. So I've built or helped build three data centric startup companies. Um, so part of what was really exciting about joining Domo was that all of the stuff you get out of the box with Domo uh, from a data infrastructure perspective, data, you know, data integration, data transformation, um, visualization, and then the last mile, um, the app platform and being able to um, really bring data all the way through that journey. Um, that's something I wish I had had over the last decade or so um, when I was building my own uh, products. And so it's it's awesome to be here. It's awesome to have a chance to help grow and enable the community. Um, and um, yeah, so thank you for hosting me. Wicked. Um, and what would you say was your biggest like aha moment though? Like what kind of, you know, the lights, light bulbs really kind of lit up um, in terms of your use of DDX Bricks? Yeah, so with DDX Bricks, it's important thing to note is it's it is actually an app built on our app platform. So DX Bricks is a a smaller, lighter weight, um, contemplated app uh, that leverages all the power that a, a full custom app that, that Domo might build for um, for our customers using you know React, using a lot of the the full code web development tooling. Um, all of that sits on the same app platform, mm. um, which which means you get all of the infrastructure out of the box. Um, and so in terms of the aha moment there, um, I actually had a request from a, a prospect um, who wanted to be able to build um, this sort of custom map application on Domo using ArcGIS, which is a, a, one of the industry standard geospatial uh, mapping libraries yeah. um, products. And so they have a JavaScript API and I, I realized, um, oh, well, we have this thing called Bricks where pretty much anything that Domo doesn't offer out of the box, you can, if you can find a JavaScript tutorial online, build into Domo. And so yeah. I, you know, went and learned the ArcGIS API, or the, the, the JavaScript library, built an application to Domo within a day. And I was like, this is awesome because Anything you can find online, any tutorial that you go, you go out and are inspired by that has a JavaScript library, yeah. um, anything you can do with front end code, you can then build into Domo, which means it's production ready, essentially, right? It has the scalability, the security, all of that underlying data infrastructure that comes with Domo out of the box. You get to build a tutorial on top of that. So it's almost like for me, the aha moment was, oh my gosh, I love going and doing tutorials. I love learning these new libraries, all this new capability. Um, the problem with those tutorials is it's all kind of dummy data. It's all, okay, like 
sample, you can't actually go from that to a production app in mm -hmm. a, the matter of a day, but on yeah. Domo, you can. And so that was like, oh, this is a huge unlock because I could get an app that that is scalable to you know, thousands and thousands of users overnight just by and deploy it um, in, in DDX just by learning, you know, a, a few lines of JavaScript code that, that this yeah. tutorial or, or whatever it is yeah. online. Um, and yeah, so I that had was that, really I had that experience backwards, actually. So, you know, I didn't I'm not saying I started my career in Domo, but I definitely started more of the app dev and the Python dev stuff as a citizen developer or whatever at Domo. And then I was like trying to do these JavaScript tutorials and half of the tutorial was just set up authentication and login and JWT tokens and and authentication stuff. And I'm like, man, I have never had to code that in Domo because that's already done, right? <laughs> Scott, he makes it sound so easy. Just learn the JavaScript library and add in the Domo API. Yeah, you know, just. <laughs> Just okay, and, and that's a fair point. Um, but what's nice about Bricks, you know, relative to the custom app framework, and, and in Bricks, in in some ways, is a really nice stepping stone to the custom app uh, framework. Is you can start with just a few lines of code. You don't necessarily have to go out and build a whole, you know, JavaScript application tutorial. Um, the barrier to entry with Bricks is really, really low. So. Yeah. Um, it, it could be as small as, and you guys have built some really cool bricks um, that are that provide a lot of value, valuable functionality. Um, that and and you'll be Elliot will will speak more to more to this that um, didn't require you to go and you know get a degree in computer science to build. You guys were able to figure you know build some pretty cool stuff with 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 um, not a ton of code, and that, so that's awesome. Yeah, speaking of which, um, Elliot, I think uh, not to out you, but I, you know, you used to work at Domo and did all of the amazing things. You've got a, your own YouTube channel you've been working on. Um, I think you did. You mentioned you've done uh, some sort of a boot camp or anything. What about you? What was your big aha moment with DDX Bricks or custom apps? Or, but also, who are you? Where are you from? What's your story? <laughs> yeah, really happy to be here. Jay, to answer your first question. Um, yeah, so I, I would consider myself a very much a citizen developer. So my background isn't is in accounting. Um, I'm, you know, I was working towards being a certified public accountant, got into Domo a few years ago and um, worked there for a brief time. And, and now I've been working on DDX Bricks. And I think for me, the aha moment was just being able to kind of like what Noah said, extend the Domo platform, right? So like I love all the the dashboards. I love all the cards that you can do, but being able to get really creative when it comes to JavaScript or pulling in APIs. Um, for me is really exciting. And and like Noah said, right, a brick is just a, a basic app and it, it's a, a framework that's already stood up. And so in this case, it's really easy to get started with it. And so I've loved downloading the the bricks from the app store and, um, you know, tinkering with them, adjusting them, modifying them to to suit my needs. Nice. Um, just real quick, because Elliot's entirely too humble, but I'm all about like trying to get this guy famous. Um, Elliot does have a YouTube channel where he has, and, and honestly, guys, this is like part of the reason I'm so excited to collaborate with him is, you know, what I like about what um, Elliot has done is he's done a, several videos where he's talking about how Domo integrates into a larger ecosystem. And so if you're an organization that already has a tech stack or that has um, very specific kind of problems that you're trying to solve, Elliot has done some things like uh, look at data flow orchestration, data orchestration using Snowflake, or he's got some videos where he does some automation, um, I think using Integromat. So it, this kid is definitely someone you want to keep your eyes on. I'm going to not embarrass him anymore. Um, Elliot, do you want to go ahead and uh, maybe walk us through some of the apps that have been built and developed in the Domo community? Yeah, yeah, I'd love to. So like like Jay was saying, we've created um, we, we've had a lot of community contribute different bricks that we're, we're going to go over today. And um, I guess I, I just want to preface, like like I said, I, I am very much a citizen developer. Right. And so I think that's something to highlight here is that getting started with bricks can be just as easy as going to the App Store, typing in DDX bricks, downloading it, trying it out, testing it out. And so today we're going to show some pre-built bricks and then also some bricks that we have built on our own. And to start off, this first brick that I wanted to show was a kind of welcome to Domo brick where basically it's it finds the user, the name of the user, and then displays the most popular dashboards that are in an instance, and then allows the user to open the link in a new tab 
And so in this case, I can go to the variables use case, which is our most popular dashboard in the Domo uh, Dojo instance. Oh, good. I love that. Love it. So I want to show real quick, um, I'm not going to go too into detail with the code, but I am going to briefly talk about a couple key concepts. Um, the first key concept is with Bricks, you have access to these environment variables that um, display things such as username, who's logged in, um, where they logged in from. And so in this case, if I wanted to show, you know, that's how I'm dynamically showing the name of the user here. And so if I wanted to, just as an example here, come into my console and run it, I can get back a payload here that shows everything about the person that's logged in, right? So Ellie, in this case, for those of us on smaller monitors, is there any way you can zoom in a little? Yeah. Gotta... Oh, nice, thanks. And, so then, and just because I'm an idiot and I've never heard of console.log, what does console.log do? Yeah, so console.log is is a way that you print out um, if you're doing error handling in JavaScript or anything like that. Uh, console log is um, a way to display your code in the browser. And so the way I, I get to it is I, I just right click it, click inspect, and then come over here to the console. And like I said, this console holds a lot of um, a lot of data. And if you console log something, you um, then can have it appear in the console and it just kind of keeps track of. Um, so as you're developing, you're able to use this. And like I said, here we're able to see things such as our username, um, email, what, what, where we logged in from, all that great stuff. And so that's an example of, of doing something dynamically with a brick. The second thing I wanted to show with this brick is when you're trying to get data from Domo, there's a couple ways to do it. And a lot of us here, I'm sure, are very comfortable with SQL. And so there's a SQL API that you're able to hit. And so in this case, if we just look at this SQL here, I'm just selecting a few fields from a data set. And this data set is, the, is actually from the Domo stats activity log. And so I'm pulling it from there. And then I'm grouping it to create, um, you know, just, just to create the top use cases. And so, for example, if you if you wanted to change this and say, let's let's say right now I'm just limiting it to the, the top five dashboards, and I wanted to go to seven, and click run, it's able to hot reload and show now the top seven dashboards. Right. And so in this case, <laughs> Grant Smith, for some reason, is in the top dashboard, which I, which is kind of funny. Um, I love that. <laughs> so anyway, for me, being more comfortable with SQL, I would highly recommend using the SQL API. And um, that is, it's kind of hard maybe to find in the developer documentation, but when you're here in the dataset API, there's there's a couple ways to query a data set, right? There's a normal domo.git, and then also there is a um, a SQL endpoint right here, right? So it's, it's a query execute endpoint, and then all you're passing is just standard SQL to this API, and then it returns it back. And so for me, being, you know, being like a weekend developer, uh, I'm much more comfortable with SQL, and so I I chose to to go this route with this with this brick, and so I'd I'd highly recommend that for everybody else as well. Um, you know, lots nice. of great data. If I could just jump in for a second, can you go back to that documentation? So what one thing you might notice, um, and this is something that I talk a lot about on my YouTube channel, is like we're looking at the developer.domo.com. These are the so-called public APIs, right? They're documented by Domo. They're maintained, um, and and support will you know help you debug stuff related to these public APIs. Um, we're using uh, the developer token in here. We're hitting api.domo.com as opposed to going to your instance.domo.com slash whatever your URL is. Um, and I just bring this stuff up just in case you happen to be looking at other videos on my channel where I'm using a different authentication method and hitting the so-called private APIs. Um, can you go back to your brick though? Yeah. One thing I did notice is that when you, you at one point you implemented with domo.get, right? Uh, and yes. then you switched to using the post? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, this is an example, right? This is the, this uh, this top part is um, is with the domo.get and it's, it's, it's a little, from my eyes, it's a little complicated, right? And so in this case, I wanted to switch to a, a, a simpler version. And so that's when I went to the SQL API. Um, just because, like I said, being more comfortable with SQL, if you can accomplish it in multiple ways, I try and go with the easiest way first. But yeah, this this brick initially was with the domo.get API. Yeah. Eric Mason asks, are there limitations to the SQL API with queries? Like, can you do subqueries? 
I think we were kind of talking about this earlier, Noah, about like kind of best practices for for hitting that SQL API. And I'm sure Ben, you might have some ten cents to throw in there because you like to break things too, huh? Um, on that, so on that point, I, I don't know the the answer about that end point in particular. But what I would say is, the more complicated logic you're you're doing, calling calling data from you know, from your DDX brick um, kind of signals like maybe you want to do some of that processing before in like a data set view or, you know, earlier in the pipeline so that your the query that you're 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 forming in your brick can be a little simpler. Um, that's not always the best practice, right? If, if you need more flexibility in, in how you're pulling the data, like, you know, and, and you want the underlying data set that you're pulling from to be a little bit more generic, then maybe you don't do some of that processing earlier on. But um, I'd say like, you know, good to not have too complicated of queries, just at least sitting in a, in a brick. Um, that's at least my personal preference. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, guys, like if, if it takes Domo two seconds, making up a number, two seconds to take your really complicated query and return a result. That's two seconds after you clicked that you're waiting for your UI to refresh. And we're used to apps that are just like bang, 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 super instantaneous. Now Domo is fast, right? But one of the ways that you can help it be faster is if you predefine your query in a view. So Domo already knows to expect your query. It can put some under the covers optimization in place and it can get your result faster, like let's say in 0.1 seconds instead of two. And so when we think about app experience and if you've ever been to an app that just quote unquote felt slow, these are the kind of trade-offs that we're asking. It's like, where can I do that processing? Um, Antonio asks, is it possible to have more than one data data set in a brick? Yes. Um, I think you can have up to nine data sets in a brick. Um, and if, if you go into the code, I can show you how, you know, how you kind of load in each one. Um, Is that nine number tied to how many mappings you're able to set up in the... It, it's a limitation that we've, that, um, yes, that, that's kind of set up in the, pre-set up in the template. Although is that is there are there three there or they're not? I I think I've seen okay, maybe maybe there's only in the DDX blank brick there's three, but I've seen up to nine. Um, yeah. The way to I, I think if um to answer your question, Antonio, if you go to the App Store, there is a DDX brick called um, multiple data sets, I believe, and it should show like like Noah's saying there there's one that shows where you can have all all nine data sets. But yeah, that's a good question. Another brick that I wanted to show is um. This one is also very simple, but in this case, in my Domo instance, I have users that are all, all around the world that are accessing Domo. And I created a very simple world clock that updates in real time as the minutes progress. And so the, the learning here with this brick is, first of all, it doesn't have to be a very complicated, right? In this case, actually, this brick here has no CSS or JavaScript to it. All it's doing is it's creating a table with HTML, and then it's calling a Git endpoint um, that is just a, an HTTP endpoint that brings back the time of a certain of a certain place, right? So in this case, um, as an example here, if I wanted to see what the time is in Israel, I can copy this, paste it into my browser, and we can see up here in very little letters, it's just a very simple GET request, right? And so I think the learning here is that um, again, another use case for DDX bricks is if you want to enrich your data or pull in from other APIs as well in real time. You can you can do um, lots of different API requests, so I found that to be useful. Again, like I want to talk more about the the basics, and I think this one here that Scott contributed is a great example. Um, this brick here, it's just you can download it from the App Store, and it lets you dynamically switch your dimensions and uh, measures on the fly, right? So if I wanted to see you know profit by customer segment or sales by region. It's able to dynamically, you know, hot reload the the brick, and I think the learning here is, Domo has a framework called or a, a dot a what's it called, a charting library called the Phoenix library, and this is how these like these bricks and also anything in Analyzer is built. It's built with this, this with this library, and so if I wanted to see how this card is built, um, if I just type in new, I can see 
that it's declaring a new Phoenix chart and you pass in a couple parameters, right? So the chart type, the data you're passing, and also some properties that you're passing. And so if I wanted to see what this chart type was, let's let's go and look for this in the in the brick. Um, you know, we can see that it is a, a bar chart, it's a horizontal bar chart. And if I want to look at the chart properties, we can come back here and look at the property overrides and take a look and see different things, right? So for example, we're suppressing that min-max average that that kind of gets in the way, or we're adding axes labels to this brick. And um so Scott had a question earlier where he was asking about how you would add a series to this brick. And the answer there is if we come over to the Phoenix documentation, um, this is really helpful documentation in my opinion. It's It basically shows everything you need to know about all the different charts that exist in Domo. And so for example, with this question that Scott had, if I wanted to know more about the horizontal bar, I can see here that, um, you know, things that you pass into the bar, for example, you can pass a series into the bar. And I think right now with the current setup of the brick, um, a series isn't being passed. It's just um, right. It's just the, the dimensions and measures. And so if Scott, if you wanted to pass a series to this, you could. And um, again, this part here, I'm still definitely learning a lot about. But what I what I can tell you is that if you want to know if you're creating a brick and you're wanting to leverage existing Domo uh, charts that are are an analyzer, you can come in here and anything like you know anything from text boxes to tons of different maps. Like they have all this great info about what you can pass, like what properties you can pass, how you can change the chart, and how the chart interacts with with the data set. Um, so I'd highly recommend you check out this. We'll we're going to link this in the doc that Jay's going to send out later. Um, so I found that super helpful. What was super compelling about Scott's use case, though, that and one of the reasons I wanted to highlight it is that this functionality of like having a drop down and being able to dynamically change what I'm displaying was cr like this was so groundbreaking because the variables fun uh, beta hadn't been released yet, hadn't been developed. But now with the release of variables, actually what we're doing here, we're just like, oh, yeah. This is trivial. I can just do this in standard Domo, um, which is kind of a cool thing to think about, like how you know Domo product is catching up to like these things that we've needed for years, um, and then and now all of a sudden, you know, on the day that we're doing this presentation, it's not necessary. <laughs> um, so this last app, yeah, Grant Smith contributed it, and basically the idea here is that you're able to globally filter a dashboard with a brick, and so in this case. He has this brick here where you would type in the first name of somebody, um, click the filter button, and then it'll filter. The, you can see it, it's created a global filter on the dashboard and filtered it down just to the specific person. And so I thought this, this was really cool. This is, this is pretty new to me, but diving in here, um, there is a method in Delmo called filter. Uh, let's see, where is it at? Filter container where um, basically you're able to pass um, like a, a parameter into this method and it, it'll globally filter what is on the dashboard. And so in this case with Grant, what he did is he, you know, you would type in an input here. As soon as you click filter, he added a um, event listener onto this button. And then this button um, applies a global filter to um, the entire dashboard. This is a really cool use case as well, right? Because I feel like a very common use case for DDX bricks is being able to do some more custom filtering. And um, I know I know Noah was saying that, that that's a very common use case, but that was very interesting. Um, and then just just to plug the finally, um, this last one here, again, this is also one that you can download from the App Store, but this just talks a little bit about how with a brick, you can also set up AppDB. And so I won't talk too much about that, but AppDB is just, um, it's a database that you can set up on Domo that is running MongoDB on the back end. And so basically you're able to create collections of JSON, arbitrary JSON documents together, and you're able to make an app more interactive. In this case, right, we're able to create, I can submit requests where, you know, if I wanted to submit, um, you know, let's say Ben has a request to, to do something here. Um, we can see that it, it syncs onto our uh, data, onto our card. And then also if I click sync now, it can sync into our Domo data center. And so if I come over here, you know, I can see that it prepared it. And if I come to the data, I can see that a new row was created for Ben um, from my DDX brick, right? So in this case, again, just, just further extending the Domo platform. Um, I'd love to talk more about this brick at some point, but I, yeah, I think there's a lot of power to these bricks. Elliot, can you guys hear me? 
Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, so we did just release it, and maybe Noah was going to talk about it. It's, I have to, to emulate my inner Jay and Elliot and do a video. I haven't done it yet, but we did just release a DDX. I just posted in the notes related to sort of the search concepts um, to, to Grant's thing. It's a little bit, it's not complicated, it's a little complex, but worth the complexity to get set up, which is why I need to do some examples. But does some of that with like the filter, but is more based on a configuration data set. So it could pull like 10 different columns into one search field or do translation like um, segmentation or say like these five states call Ben's favorite states. And so when I search, so if the user says Ben's favorite states, they click on it, it translates that into Minnesota, Ohio, Pennsylvania, whatever, um, or even other segmentation nice. and stuff. Like I've started using it for like, hey, I know these data sets meet these criteria. If I put those data sets into the information file as data sets for Ben's criteria, I can search for that and then it just, it's doing basically in filter. Um, uh, sorry, Scott, I love Utah too. I didn't do it top of mind. Um, but again, you get the idea. It's sort of this configurable combination of filters into one drop down. Um, in the DDX, um, in the actual notes, I'll um, I'll share it as well. But we we have um, a link to the COVID tracker. We used it on one spot too, where you can sort of see it play county, state, country into one drop down. I was thinking it's always helpful to have that. So I'll. I'll post that in there too and again I, I will work on getting better documentation on it it's sort of my baby that I again back to the I could not have translated this this was originally a custom app we used for a couple things I have no ability to translate it into the complicated code that's there I called it a favor with some of our app developers to put it into a DDX format so we could get it out there for people to use and so um, I could talk to the value of it and how to set it up and some of those nuances I cannot tell you exactly how, but that's part of the beauty for me is like, I, I couldn't do it on my own, but if someone could do it for me, then I could use the configuration data set and make some changes. Anyways, I'll, I'll, I'll be careful. Yeah, that's rad. Uh, that's awesome, Ben. That's awesome. You know, what, what I really appreciate about these DDX bricks is they allow you to do other things that you otherwise wouldn't have control over. So like this ability to have one filter that filters multiple columns of a data set. Guys, that's huge, right? Because in Ant's grant, in in Grant's app um, that Elliot just demoed, you could only search first name. So if I wanted to search for Hitchcock, I would need a separate column, right, to apply that filter. But with Ben's solution, I can now filter multiple columns at the same time, which is just mind blowing. Or if I wanted to, you know, let's say I had a data set of projects that had a start date and an end date. And my question was, I want to find all of the projects that were active on a specific point in time. In order to do that, I would either have to build a data set where I blow out the data, or I need to be able to filter on a between clause in a filter, which is currently not available in a Domo app as far as I know, or sorry, a Domo uh, filter tile. So like the ability to write this, now as a ddx brick this is like this is game changing or, stuff so or think like, more than just i want to build a pretty picture or Maybe. like or do like hey i only want to give my users the option to filter on things with at least 10 units of sale right so rather than i still want maybe i still want those in the totals but i don't want to so i could my configuration can only show items with 10 units of sales it can go across multiple items oh right but i always just I, I always say, like, I try to assume, too, like, I don't, I don't assume my users are stupid, right? I assume my users don't always know what they're looking for, right? So I might be looking for, like, all iPads. And I don't know if iPads in the product name or the category or both. And so if I have a configuration file that combines those, I just say, hey, as a user, I want iPads. And I'm right. like, oh, do I want iPads category or do I want iPad 13-inch yeah. whatever? And that experience without that app is hard, right? Because, like, again, you're like, well, let me check, let me check product description. Oh, it's not there. Let me check product category. Right, That's sort of right, it. But right. what other options are over here? Let me check. It's that kind of an experience can be really streamlined with some of these functional DDX, not just the pretty picture. Like you said. Yeah. Um, I love although, that. as I've been demoing DDX and some of these connection tours with Darren, he kept on asking me to ask Chris Wilson, like, well, we're the sexy ones. Like, we're the, I'm like, we have some of those, right? They're still like, but I'm like, at the core, like the most used ones are just about creating more usability for people. Right. Um, we're gonna, I'm, I actually intentionally told Noah, I was like, Noah, no sexy apps. I just want ugly apps 
that anybody can build as a weekend project if they know JavaScript and any sort of coding. And on that note, um, Noah, I did ask you if you could share with us some of your development practices, like how you go about building apps. And actually, let me reframe that. I don't want to know how you build apps. Assume that you're as dumb and as bad at building apps as I am. What would be some tricks that would help me be a little bit more effective with my time? Um, well, kind of the apps that, that first the apps that Elliot showed and that you guys have all built, I wouldn't undersell those. Those are really impressive, very cool. Um, I think, you know, definitely like, if, if you can do that, you can do anything. So just like keep along the learning, keep along like the curiosity. And that's, um, you know, one of the best parts about DDX Bricks is I think they're a mechanism for exploration and curiosity and testing. And so what I'll get into now is just kind of how do you start? How do you, you know, start if you want to build your own brick? And, and um, before I jump into that, maybe it's worth talking a little bit about the app platform in general um, and what you get out of the box with Domo. Like why build apps on Domo in the first place, including bricks? Um, and so to kind of reinforce some of the themes that we've talked about, let me let me share my screen here. So this this infographic is something Chris Willis put together, and I think it's it's very uh, it's 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 really provocative in the sense that Domo can do. So so many amazing things in terms of the core product capabilities, but at that last mile, when when you need to get data to the right people to take action on the data at the right time, you need a certain amount of customization and flexibility. And that's where apps come in. They they extend, like you guys have been saying, they they give you the possibility to build things that aren't currently in the Domo product um, to do to make it so that. Domo can do whatever you need it to do. Um, and all of the kind of app solutions, mm. these these like last mile type of um, applications, they all sit on this huge, you know, out of the box infrastructure that if you were having to build this on your own, like build an app on your own, especially one powered by data, these would be things you have to do do and set up by on by yourself. So all the way from setting up the servers that your application is going to run on, the storage system, um, figuring out how to how to do load balancing and manage traffic, um, not to mention all of the out of the box domo functionality like integrating data sources and doing transformation on it and cleaning it up before it gets into your app, um, along with user management out of the box, right? You have to implement authentication system. So all the stuff that comes with Domo means it's a really powerful place to build these front end solutions on. So you get to focus if you're if you're an app developer or you're a citizen developer who wants to extend the functionality of Domo, you just have to focus on writing a little bit of code here or leveraging some code that others have written to kind of unlock pretty much unlimited functionality. You know, and that maybe I'm overstating a little bit, but it's the the flexibility that you get here when all this is taken care of for you it means you can innovate much faster means you can test new ideas much faster and that's how i'd like to think about ddx bricks is for both citizen and professional developers it's this very low barrier to entry way to to develop these apps um and test and iterate much quicker which means you can start to um you know really get your ideas out there not have to worry about all the setup that's required in typical app development. Just two seconds on that, guys. You know, for those of you who have built an app on, on, at home, right? You do it on your local computer and its local host is your URL. Have you ever thought about what it takes to take a local host app, like local on your computer and make it available to the world in a way that's like actually fast and secure? Of course you haven't because <laughs> we don't have to do that, right? So that's the infrastructure bit, you know, to really drive it home. That's the infrastructure bit that Noah's speaking to here. I know, Noah, you've got a hard stop in 15 minutes, but yeah, you had some really clever things that you were telling me about that I would love for the community to know about. Sure, yeah. So um, typically what I'll start with, and, you know, you can find a lot in the, in the App Store here, um, but if you search DDX, there are a, a large number of really valuable DDX bricks that have some pre-built templates to get you started. Um, 
if you're building your own from scratch, I, I tend to use the blank brick, which has nothing in it um, to start or almost nothing in it with some caveats. So what I'll do is, is just kind of walk you guys through the way that I start a brick and give you some you know, additional suggestions for exploration and, and curiosity here. So if I want to add this to um, Elliot's dashboard that he was, he was showing, um, I'll download this blank DDX brick here. Um, and it's creating the app. So that should only take a second. Um, right now, there's nothing here. It's blank. But if I go in and I start to look at the code and can, um, well, let's wait for it to load, but is this big enough? Do you want me to zoom in a little? Can, can yeah, you if you see? could zoom in, that'd be nice. Okay. Is that, is that a little better? That's great. Okay. So down here are the, is a, is a nice view of, and I can, oh, uh oh. Uh, when I zoomed in, I might've lost the, uh, oh, there we go. I have to scroll down. Um, you can see some data. So this is example sales data that comes preloaded, but you can pick, you know, any data set that you want. So let's say we want to use the data set that Elliot just demoed that the Domo request form here, this is data set zero. So, you know, the question came up, can you have more than one data set? You can, and the way you get data in, um, is by specifying the number of data set from this data sets uh, uh, variable um, that 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 you, that is kind of preloaded in for you. So you can see it here that in the query, when you're going to get data, um, it comes predefined that data set zero will be uh, the one that gets loaded. But if you wanted to change this to one, you could get you could use this other data set. You, know, you can write multiple queries here. So that's how you get data from different sources in. Um, and this line of code right here, domo.get query. Um, what this does is make a get request. So it it, it takes this um, endpoint here, which calls data set zero, um, as well as um, the fields that you define that you want. So in this case, the fields were state and revenue, but that's not going to work on this data set because we just changed it. That was based on the sample data set. So let's say we just want the submitter and the description. And we're not really going to group by here because there isn't as far as I can tell, a clear reason we want to do that. So I'm going to remove the group by. Um, I'm going to remove the group by from the query string that we have here as well. Um, and uh, sometimes when I click back, it I'll lose my progress. So, um, so what's going to happen here now is when we query this data, um, when the data is returned, so there's this dot then, that means, you know, it, this is an asynchronous call and it returns a promise, which means it's going to wait until in JavaScript, which wait until the data is returned before it runs this code here. So we run this query. We just want to get the data from these fields from the data set below. Um, and it will run this function that's defined here once once we get the, the, um, the query. And Elliot talked about console.log. So what all this does so far is just going to print out the data and make sure that we're get, we wrote our query correctly, we got the data correctly. So I'll open the, de the uh, developer tools, the browser developer tools here, and I'm going to click run and just test that we get it. we're getting the data here. Um, yeah, so you can see there are four um, objects, each representing a row from our data set with these two fields that we defined, Elliot, you know, the submitter, and the description of this first one is Elliot and DDX Bricks demo dashboard, the description. Um, so we have this data. This is great. We, if we want to build you know, our app around this data or other data sets, this is how we get data in. And we would write our code right in here that would execute JavaScript. Um, and you, you, know, you can find more functions below and call those. What I want to highlight and, and something I mentioned to Jay is um, this is an area, This the developer experience in DDX is an area we're currently investing you know, a lot more time and energy in, in building out. Um, personally, I like using um, a tool called CodePen, which is a community uh, social development environment. So you can get a lot of inspiration here. People post code. If you Google anything JavaScript related, there'll usually be a CodePen link where you can test out the code yourself. Um, so if I want to create a DDX brick that has some complexity to it, um, what I'll tend to do is open up a CodePen here and I will copy this code over, although not all this code is going to work because we don't have access to these global variables. But what we do want is to 
kind of base whatever we build in our code pen off of this data here. So what I'll do, and this is kind of like a trick, is I'm going to copy this object and use it as a starting point in my app. So um, I create a constant and I, I say data. This now is the data that I have some like static test data that I can start to build an app around or a, a brick. Um, and now I can, you know, leverage this environment, which has some additional functionality so I can save um, versions of my brick or of my, you know, code here. Um, it has, there's some nice, you know, I can, I can hide some code. I uh, collapse some of the, the lines in there. I can write uh, functions. There's, I think there's some autocomplete um, functionality, but let's just say I wanted to, to write a list. Like this brick is just going to be a very plain, uh, a plain list here. Um, what I do is I create a div or actually um, an unordered list item maybe. Um, and so for those of you who don't know HTML, um, it's I, I think definitely worthwhile learning. There's there, there's just a few um, tags that that kind of uh, represent the structure of, of a web page and I'll, I'll kind of open up. You can see in your developer window that if you want to look at any website and see you know what the HTML is that 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 define the structure of the page. You can go in and see that here. So that's all we're building is you know building out this structure that the browser will read and then render. Um, so um, if you want to see this UL item, you actually probably have to look at the place where it's being rendered out. Um, and you know if you're in your developer console, it'll highlight different sections. But so you can see I just wrote this UL. There's nothing in it, but um, it's in here. So it's it's kind of a nice way to to sanity check what you're building as you build it, looking at this uh, the elements panel here. Um, and so if I were to, you know, if the goal is, is to build a very simple um, unordered list, I would create a list item and I'd say, you know, sample data point. Um, and you can see that it's being created here. So I'm, I'm actually starting to build a web page or an app. Um, and it, you know, it's very basic. It's just this unordered list and one list item and you can see over on if I were to kind of right click and, and do inspect you can see that now that's showing up here so this is um, kind of the 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 gist of what's happening um, with front end web development is you're defining the structure of of what you want via HTML the CSS helps you add style um, different you know to make it all look nice um, and the JavaScript helps you add dynamic functionality, including pulling, reading data, hitting API endpoints, um, and all of that. And we have a hard let's... stop in six minutes, but yeah. Um, okay. Um, for those of you who have done a little bit of JavaScript development before, I'm sure you can see where he's going. And for those of you who haven't done any JavaScript development before, I, I can't stress enough. Like some of this will look like Greek to you, like this dot get, this dot then. I, for example, did not understand what an asynchronous request was, and it literally stopped me from being able to move forward with app development with data because I just straight up did not understand it. Um, so I, if that's something that's a problem for you or something that you're challenged with is like, what is this concept of asynchronous data? Google it. The answers are on Google. Um, but also I think um, I'm going to have to grab this crew together and we're going to have to talk a little bit about that um, in the context of a DD expert at a, sec at a separate time. Um, Noah, Elliot, Guys, thank you so, so much for, for taking the time to join us today um, and share your wisdom, share your experiences. I'm so stoked that we made this happen. Ben, I know you've been super supportive um, kind of behind the scenes in, in terms of like getting people on board with what we're trying to accomplish here. Folks from the community, if you thought this was useful, um, maybe, at, Ben, is there someone we could email and just be like, this is awesome, make sure they do it again. <laughs> just, is there something like that or? I won't put you on the spot. Yeah, just, no, just, mean, just, just spam Ben. Me. Spam Ben. Yeah, you can certainly email me Ben dot s c h e i n at domo .com. Oh, we need to type that in chat. I really, you know, I love this Domo community. I would love for people to Slack, Slack me. If you don't have access to the Dojo instance, let's get you in there. Let's talk about bricks. Like, you know, I'm no expert by any means. I'm very much a citizen developer, but I want to help people out. So if you're, if you don't have quite like. And you need to be slacking people at let's let's work with each other ask questions and you know love to collaborate with people
look, I think we still owe a better way to share some of this. Like, it's not always easy to publish a brick. But the beautiful thing about brick is, um, and Jace has done this a little bit with our Domo and data too, is like, you can just copy the three tabs, right? You have your code tab, your HTML, your CSS. So yes, it would be better if it was in the app store, it's all pretty. But worst case, if you just know, okay, I can take the multi-data set starter brick and copy this stuff. It, it's not perfect, but it's been three seconds. It's still a pretty powerful way to share stuff. And I know someone had asked about, you know, like if it's, if you're looking for like a Domo stat or if you're looking at the user, like some of that early stuff that Elliot showed, it does. Once you paste it in your instance, it's your instance. It's not what, but it's generic, but it, it's not after what was in Elliot's instance. It's not what your users see. So um, that's where it gets really powerful, right? So sharing will make it easier, but uh, let's not wait for it to be super easy. Let's do what we have now and keep vibrating. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys for, for having me as well. And feel free to Slack me or reach out to me by email, my first name and my last name at domo.com. Love the, love the enthusiasm here. Thank you guys so much. Awesome. Thanks everyone. Thanks, Appreciate guys. it. Yeah. Thanks for the time. Thanks guys.